Okay, so this video is going to cover the instructions on how to do the Momentum Virtual Lab or FET. So you should have this handout right here. Uh, first, we'll do those review what we talked about so far in this unit. Uh, we talked about a concept called momentum, and we kind of define momentum in physics terms as, and we used a P for momentum, and it's equal to mass times velocity. Now, the units for mass is kilograms. The units for velocity we need are meters per second. So the units for, velo for momentum would be kilograms times meters per second. Uh, we've also talked about the change in momentum. And we do the change in momentum, that is delta P, that stands for change in, and that's equal to mass times the change in velocity. And we can extend that equation and say that the change in momentum is equal to the mass times, and the change in means final minus initial, so that would be final velocity minus initial velocity. So if something starts from rest, its initial velocity is zero. If something's coming to a stop, its final velocity is zero. Now, impulse is another thing we, we talked about, and we defined it in terms, we said it's a force acting over a certain time period, so it's force times time. Since the units for force are newtons and the units for time is seconds, the units would be a newton second, which is newtons times second. We also say the impulse is equal to change in momentum, so if that's the case, then a newton second is also equal to the same thing as a kilograms times a meters per second, the units for momentum, and those units are interchangeable. You can use them either one with impulse. Now, we also say that impulse is equal to the change in momentum, and the change in momentum is equal to mass times velocity final minus velocity initial. So, as far as our momentum impulse theorem, our equation was force times time is equal to mass, the change in momentum, which is MVF minus VI. So that was another equation that we've used in some of our problems, uh, this whole thing here, um, to, you know, when we're looking at problems involving the impulse and momentum. We just have to look at the, what the problem gives us and decide what equation to use out of these three um, you know, this equation right here, this equation, and also we have impulse, which is this force times time, and then we have the impulse momentum theorem, which is this whole thing right here. So for what you're doing today on this, you're you know, going to answer these first couple of questions, and then for the instructions, you don't have to go to this uh, FET thing here because I've already had it, you know, the link's already on your Schoology page, so you can just click it and it's going to tell you directions make sure that you you know number three you're going to uncheck all the boxes in the menu uh, so you're going to follow those directions and then when you get to here it's going to tell you specifically what to do now one thing that you add in um, is for this first part here table one is for the second ball um, it wants you need to set your velocity for the second ball at zero for the beginning. That's one thing that I, I forgot to add and I'll show you how to, to do that. So basically in this uh, collision lab you click you know, explore 1D and you know click off these these things here and this is you know shows you like a collision lab. Well what happens when two things collide about their momentum. They have initial momentum and they have a final momentum after a collision. Well, you're not doing collisions in this uh, in this fat right here. We're just looking at the momentum before they uh, collide with one another. And we will look at, uh, tomorrow we'll do another fat where we actually look at collisions. But I think in the first part it says to set both of them at one. What you do is just click on the box where it says for one, the mass is 0 .5, 0 0.50. You can click on that and change it here like to one. Uh, the mass of the second one. I think it said it sets the same thing, just you know, follow the directions. And you click on more data and it gives you the position of them where they start and the velocity. And the second one you see it has a velocity at negative 0.5. And why is it negative? Well, it's moving to the left. Anytime something moves to the left, we have it has a negative velocity. If it moves to the right, it has a positive velocity. But you can change this velocity by clicking in the box and clicking on zero to where it's not moving in the beginning. 
and you're going to be you know write down you know the masses and the velocities and then the total momentum. The momentum is the mass times the velocity. That's why the second ball has a momentum of zero because it's not moving in the beginning. But in this, in this first slab, you know, in, uh, we're not doing the collisions, although you can look at it, what happens when they collide. You see the momentum of the first one, you know, and you click stop. And the momentum of the first ball after, you know, its final momentum after it collides it would be zero, and then the second one would have momentum. All right, so that, we're just looking at momentum, though, in the beginning. You're not doing these collisions. You can press the little... Uh, button there, the circular button with an arrow on the end to reset it. And uh, you're just looking at their initial momentums without doing any collisions for this uh, first lap. And you're going to be, you know, once you fill in your, your numbers there, you're going to you know answer these questions. And then it's going to tell you uh, to change the velocity of ball two to three meters per second, complete table two, and fill in that stuff and answer those questions right there. So it's kind of a review, this right here, of, of stuff that we've already covered in momentum. And tomorrow's collision lab will be about something we're going to cover in uh, a few more days that's dealing with the law of conservation of momentum.